At the heart of every fire ant colony lies a single individual that controls the entire system, the queen. She is the sole reproductive engine of the colony, laying thousands of eggs daily to ensure its survival and growth. Naturally, many pest control efforts target the queen. But the question arises, how exactly can one infect the fire ant queen to disrupt the colony from within? It's not as simple as killing a visible worker ant. The queen lives deep underground, heavily guarded, and far removed from external threats. Infecting her requires a clever, indirect strategy that exploits the biology and behavior of the colony itself. In this video, we will explore in detail the fascinating science behind infecting a fire ant queen. So let's start today's video. Before diving into how to infect the queen, it's crucial to understand how a fire ant colony is structured. A typical fire ant colony contains thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands, of worker ants. These ants are divided into castes based on size and job role. Some are foragers, some defend the nest, and others tend to the queen and her brood. At the center of this organized chaos is the queen, usually hidden several feet underground in the deepest, most protected part of the nest. It's extremely difficult for anything to reach her, including poisons or pathogens. To add to the difficulty, fire ant colonies can be monogyne, with one queen, or polygyne, with multiple queens. While this is primarily a feeding mechanism, it can also serve as a pathway for spreading infections. However, the colony's internal hygiene makes this route tricky. Worker ants tend to avoid feeding the queen anything that seems off or contaminated. Moreover, they have the ability to recognize infected nestmates and will often remove them from the nest or isolate them, reducing the risk of the queen becoming exposed. Despite these defenses, researchers and pest control specialists have developed ways to exploit this system. One method is by using slow-acting poisons or biological agents that don't kill the worker immediately. These substances are disguised within attractive baits that forager ants collect and bring back to the colony. Because the poison is slow-acting, the worker ant doesn't show symptoms right away and continues sharing the bait with others including the queen. Over the years, scientists have studied several biological agents capable of infecting fire ants, with some showing great promise in reaching the queen. Among these are fungal pathogens, microsporidia, viruses, and parasitic nematodes. The fungal pathogen Bovaria bassiana. Eventually, the fungus kills the host and produces more spores to infect others. When fire ants come into contact with spores while foraging, they can bring them back to the nest. If the conditions are right especially if humidity is high the spores can spread through grooming and contact, eventually reaching the queen. Microsporidia, Thelahenia solenopsae One of the most effective biological controls for fire ants is Thelahenia solenopsae, a microscopic parasite. This microsporidium infects the fat body of ants, which is similar to the liver in humans. Infected ants become sluggish and have shorter lifespans. More importantly, when queens become infected, their egg production drops dramatically or stops altogether. Fire ant virus, Solenopsis invictivirus 1. This virus specifically infects red imported fire ants and has been observed in both worker ants and queens. Infected colonies show slower growth and can eventually collapse. Parasitic nematodes, some nematodes microscopic roundworms can enter fire ant colonies and infect their inhabitants. These parasites are typically introduced into the soil around a mound. Once inside, they release bacteria that kill the host or suppress its immune system. The challenge with nematodes is ensuring they reach deep enough into the colony to affect the queen's chamber. To infect the fire ant queen, the bait used must be irresistible. Baits should be placed near active foraging trails or just outside the nest. Fire ants tend to forage at specific times of the day depending on temperature and moisture. Observing their activity helps determine the best time for baiting. Despite the promise of biological control and infection-based strategies, there are challenges. A queen can survive an infection for weeks or months before symptoms become apparent. Also, if the colony is polygyne, other queens may take over egg-laying duties even if one is infected. There's also the issue of environmental factors. Releasing biological agents in the wild requires careful planning and sometimes regulatory approval. 
The long-term ecological impact must be considered to avoid unintended consequences. Infecting a fire ant queen is no easy feat. That can bypass the ant's incredible hygiene and social defenses. Modern science has made significant strides in targeting unlike chemical sprays that kill on contact, biological control is subtle. It works by slowly weakening the colony from within until the queen is either directly affected or her ability to reproduce is compromised. The colony gradually declines, unable to replace aging workers or maintain its structure. So, the next time you see a fire ant mound, remember the real battle lies not on the surface, but deep underground, where a single queen decides the fate of an entire army. Infect her, and the empire begins to crumble. Until next time stay tuned and don't forget to like, share this video and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Thank you. Take care and goodbye.